Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome to another episode of the Whiskey Entitled. Today we're going to be talking about a specific type of cask finish made with some kind of magical fortified wine that we've all come to know and love so well. Um, I'd tell you what kind of cask finish it is, but then that would ruin this intro. So maybe we should... Uh, All right, man. Totally have a slid. Ooh, I've been on one side and the other side. Oh, I'm having some technical difficulties. You Sounds are? like you're having technical difficulties too. Yeah, th no. that's not really technical, but yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> I mean, technically children, right? True, true. Uh, but yeah, so uh, welcome guys to another episode of Whiskey and Title. As you can see in the title below, we're talking about sherry whiskeys, um, sherry cast finishes. Um, yeah. Hey, Thomas, how you doing? So oh, uh, hey. sit back, relax. Hopefully you guys have a glass of sherry that we can talk about to give you guys some knowledge. But um, before that, um, as this is a whiskey show, what is in your glass, my friend, today? Really, dude? Again? Wow, you must really like that. It's crazy. I haven't seen Wally that much into a bottle since, like, McCallum cast strength and stuff, dude. Like, that's almost every other episode you're drinking, and it's a bottle kill. Do you have extra? Like, I hope you have an, uh, an extra. Oh, one, I have dude. two more bottles. Yeah, okay. I'm just, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, he's too happy about that. Hey, Habs, Steve, have, how you doing? I have two more bottles, and I'm always looking for more, so. Yes, it's very um, fakey looking today. I know, it's because I told you I wasn't coming. Hey, Byron, to what's up? I'm in a rush because I didn't know what the show is about. I was like, what's the show about? I told you and about you like, said we're... like a year, like a year, like an hour or so ago. You said the show is going to be about Sherry, and so I thought we were talking about Sherry's. Yes, Steve, I killed a bottle. It's like my doesn't ever so i thought the show was gonna be about sherry so i got really excited so i wanted to get some bottles of sherry and i realized i only have one in my house right now <laughs> and then you were like no sherry cask finish and sherry i was like oh, that makes a huge difference. yeah that's a whiskey show maybe we talk about that later like i would uh, i would think we would do a bottle kill. of port first before we do a bottle of sherry <laughs> i have i actually have a uh, a local batch a local whiskey from a local place that did a port and sherry mashup Ooh, that sounds like fun it's um, delicious. So that's in your yeah. uh, in your bottle. My bottle. Oh, what's in your glass? Uh, in my glass is uh, was it in the dark of the abyss? Uh, Scotch Whiskey Society, and is finished in Exoloroso Sherry. So it's kind of a good segue to our topic today. I think Steve was talking about that stuff. He loves it. Oh, I love this one. Um, but before we go into the topic today, did you pick up any bottles this week? One. Ooh, so did I. Okay, so you go first. Okay, I went to a uh, I went to a distillery this week. Hey, I didn't, didn't really talk about it. <laughs> yeah, why didn't you? And um, because it wasn't a distillery that made whiskey. Fair enough. So I bought a bottle of something that I'm going to give to a friend of mine who loves it. But the name of the distillery is Sang Freud, and this is a bottle of gin. Ooh, fancy! Is it some more London Dry? Is it uh, more juniper heavy? So it's it? made in the Dutch style. Which okay. doesn't mean a whole lot to me, but it's, it actually tastes pretty good, and it's not juniper forward. Yeah, it's it's part of the eau de violet, right? It's more of that kind of stuff. Uh, cardamom. Okay, it's cardamom different. All right. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's definitely not the pine needles and the stuff of your grandma's gin. No, it's definitely not like I'm eating a Christmas tree. This is disgusting. It's more Why citrusy, right? Is it more citrusy? Uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of orange to it, which I was surprised about. Yeah. It's yeah, that was surprising. Yeah. I, I drink it. That that that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing yeah the, it's owned by two guys who are just starting up and uh it's and, they're having a good time and to be honest gin and vodka like the clear spirits are definitely the quickest way to get your distillery up and running and then move into the brown spirits and stuff so yeah it makes sense they don't really have plans to though they really want to be 100 percent like gin dutch gin good joint yeah. good for them good for them they got that niche wild i've um, never yeah so i participated in a contest by at least Ooh. i have whiskey so, oh, I saw that. So he gave me Spooth Ambler's Big Level. I've never had it. And he's like, dude, have you ever tried it? I'm like, no. I thought he was going to give me a sample. He sent me a bottle. Ooh, so, what sample a nice, bottle. What a nice great guy. So thank you so much, Who's Have Whiskey, for this. Um, yeah, I can't wait to try it. So we'll see how it's good. We did bourbon. What's not to love? All right, calm down there, Steve. I think we all know that cats and Christmas trees go hand in hand. Yeah, them cats and them crystal trees. Put them together. Freaking Wally's nightmare. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, so... Santa um, Cruz? Santa Cruz. 
So to drop, just to level set with everybody. So as everyone knows, Sherry cast finishes. Sherry is a fortified wine uh, made in Spain. It's made in a Sherry triangle, so to speak, where it's um, certain areas. Area de la Frontera. Yeah. So basically, yeah, like like you said, like it's um, what what's that other um, theme? Is it Champagne? It's only made in Champagne, right? And then there's some other. Champagne's only made in Champagne. Um, uh, there are lots that are like what, this. What's a cognac? And... Cognac's only, only made, made in cognac. cognac. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like one of those, right? But th for this, for Sherry in it as a whole, it's there's a triangle, so to speak, of an area. Um, there have been issues where places nearby to the triangle are calling themselves Sherry. So th Correct. there has been issues that way. And um, right now, like with Scotch, um, with bourbon, they're trying to make laws to, fi to lock down the Sherry cast. So that's happening in our... Not so distant future. To protect the name. Basically, to protect their wallets, to call themselves that is is what it is, right? So, um, uh, when talking about that, um, the interesting fact that I found is back in the day when sherry was actually transported with those barrels, um, the Scotch and the Englishmen, when they got the sherry, they filled it up with their whiskey and sent it back. So that's kind of where it's. I've heard it started the sherry cast finishings. It wasn't a. It's kind of like rum cast finishes, right? Like you bring rum over, you fill rum with some, the rum cast with something else, and move it over. So that's what I've heard. I don't know, Wally, if you've. Do you? Heard Couldn't you just put the rum in cherry casks instead? You could. You could. So that's how the transportation happened. But then during the 1900s, um, the Spanish held cast and only allowed sherry to be bottled in Spain. So that stopped the movement of barrels. So. The, and the biggest thing that I learned about sherry casts as a whole is the fact that the sherry casts that are used in our whiskeys, except for I heard McAllen and Edgerton groups, they have a, their own um, cooperage in Spain. They do. So that's a bit different. But the most everyday people sco um, scotch finished in sherry casts are actually younger, lesser quality sherry aged around about two years to actually be called sherry and then dumped. So they're actually not consumed sherry. So when someone says drink sherry... So it can help more barrel production. That's actually false. That's called sherry seasoning, and they're not the only ones who do that. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think – I'm not talking about um, Edgerton Group. I'm talking about everyone as a whole because – I'm so even hard. talking about McAllen because they also source from Eret de la Frontera. And the only reason I know how to say that the way that they say it is because I've heard been. Nicholas say it too many times <laughs> and Nicola say it. And it's fun to say it that way no, instead Steve, of being I'm like a working. regular American where you're like Jerez de la Frontera. But – um. Yeah, no, uh, they do the same thing. They season theirs for a period of time, and then they yep. air dry it for three years out there. Yeah, no, Steve, I wasn't re uh, look, reading in Wikipedia. I've been like – It sounds like you were there. I know, right? I was diving into it, and I'm like trying to recall what I was reading for like the past three hours or so. So it like I when I start reading stuff, I go into a rabbit hole, and you're like, oh, what is this? And then what's this? And then what's this? And then sooner or later, like, how the fuck did I get here? So The rabbits. Yeah. But no, it, it was just interesting because like I never – like. Me being naive, I was like, oh, someone's making sherry. After they dump the sherry, someone takes and buys a cast and goes to Scotland and makes scotch. That's yeah, and that's my I mean, perceived notion of it. You have to think they only have benefits of doing it because a regular sherry cast is costing $1,500. An ex-bourbon cast is 100 bucks. Yeah. Like, you've got some incentive to be like, hey, I've got this this butt over here you should check out. Yeah, and that's why nice I, was, butt. I was surprised about Yeah, real nice butt. But, and then with sherry, it's actually a Solaris. Liter, it's but... a Solaris system, right? So... Who's gonna remove? Generally. Who's gonna remove their Solera barrels out of their system? Like, it for one, it, it it's gonna damage the system and prolong it and slow their production down. So, having Correct. those sherry barrels back in the day, it made sense. Correct. Those are completely different. But now it's just like you said, seasoned barrels or barrels with lower quality sherry in them. So, and when people say, "Oh, I liked sherry whiskeys back in the day," no shit, you would like them back in the day because they're actually thousands sherry. of dollar sherry barrel you got gallons and gallons of sherry actually going into the cast yeah years and years right like people said that you wanted that lower echelon of solera barrels for the sherry cast just because that had years and years and years of sherry in them plus you're aging that 30 year old sherry or that 20 year old sherry into another barrel it makes sense so i was like that blew and my mind because i was like sherry whiskeys are perceivably more expensive so i assumed the expenses was because of the fact that it was using a special type of barrel which was a sherry barrel so, but then knowing that, hey, they have a two-year-old barrel, a three-year-old barrel for those sherries, I'm like, that's not that great. 
Yeah, no, uh, Curious Gen just asked that, and that's exactly what we've just gone over. Um, some yeah. They're only making sherry for some, sometimes only for the casks, and that's what they call sherry seasoning. Yeah. So it's when you're just making it for that, and then you're literally dumping it, which seems senseless in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, it does. But, and that's where I'm like, that's why I started diving that rabbit hole. Like, why is this happening? What? And then people just said, like, they couldn't transport barrels outside of Spain because they have to bottle it, so there's no point in transporting these. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Eric! With the hilarity all the time. Hi, Jason. Yeah, Eric, Eric, Eric probably be schooling all, all on this type of stuff because he's a wine sommelier, right? So he probably talks about sherry all the time. There are some legit sherries out there. Though. I've had some Mad Salem's that were freaking ball. I think it was a thirty-year-old Mad Salem. Uh, one of the brand ambassadors. It was in San Francisco. She brought it. Remember, she had it under her arm and she was like peddling it around, but oh, wasn't yeah, telling yeah, everybody yeah. about it. And I was like, "Hey, can I give me some of it?" And it was totally delicious. It was absolutely amazing. Just super. I don't know. Rich. Yeah, sorry, Jen. There's no other way to put I'm it. Confusing. So delicious. But yeah, no, it's just interesting. And then like, um, if you guys don't know, and I just found this out probably a couple of weeks ago, is like there's eight different types of sherry, but most people only talk about three main kinds, right? Pedro Jimenez. Wait. Go. Yeah. PX. So Pedro Jimenez. Yep. Oloroso. Yep. Fino. Yep. Cream. Okay. What am I not thinking of? Is it Amontillado or... Amontillado, yeah. Amontillado, which I actually have a bottle of yeah. that's finished in Amontillado right here. But, there's only five. With, what are the other? There's, there's, there's supposed to be, out of all the shares, there's supposed to be eight. And that's what I've... What are the other ones? Um, dude, I, I can Wikipedia. I think Matt Salem is one, too. So, and what's funny is Amontillado and I think... Amontillado. Amontillado and Cream are both type of Finos, but then different types of Finos. Correct. So... Like, Cream is actually pretty rich, but a regular Fino is actually pretty pretty dry. It's got... Uh, oh, Palo Cortado. That's it. Okay. See? Thank you so there much, you Eric. But you know what I mean? Like, I didn't realize that because, like, in oh, Whistler. Oral Luso. Somebody's had enough. <laughs> in, in the grand scheme of things, like, you only see PX, Oloroso, and Fino. And then you get the weird ones, right? Like, I, what do you mostly see on a shelf? I see Oloroso, I mean, PX, and I Fino. I see whatever I look for, but, like, Amontillado's legit. Oh, that's the Yeah, I think I have a theme back there. The Tane? Yeah. Yeah, this one's made with Amontillado. Oh, I, I mean, it's one. fantastic. Amontillado is so sweet and delicious. If you've ever sat down and just done a sherry flight, it's so good. Like, sherry just so, got such a sweetness. And here's it. another one. Like, it, there's, there's rankings, right? So it goes, PX is the sweetest among them all. Then that's you got good. Fino's, the driest among them all. And then you have Oloroso, which is in the middle. So that's a quick indicator if you guys are interested in cherry-finished whiskeys. Kind of work that way. PX sweeter, Oloroso in the middle, Fino drier. Just to, if you learned anything from this episode, that would probably be it. <laughs> Just to be honest, because that helped me a lot. I'm like, oh, makes total sense now. So <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's an easy way to break it down yeah. if you're looking for the textures. Yeah, and what's funny is like Glendronach, for instance, is an Oloroso finished whiskey, but it's also a PX and Oloroso blend. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it says it's a combination. Of <gasps> PX Look at and us, Oloroso. twinsies. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't even my bottle. That's a whole different issue. Oh, isn't? Oh, this is my bottle. What batch is that one? Three, four. Four. Yeah, this one's two. Everyone loves this one. I'm like, I, I'm nursing the. Crap I don't know. I had one. batch one. No, I had batch two. It, I had batch two, and it was really good. That's the one that tastes like cream sherry. Mm-hmm. For one that's supposed to be like mixed up. Yeah, this one's that's one of my favorite ones. Dalmore brags about <laughs> Patterson loves the Mad Salem. That's because it's something they love to. Sh- yeah, of course. That's the King Alexander the, the that's third is literally based on six different, five different types of sherry and one. One, one, uh, I forget, one wine, I think. Palomino grape, except for PX Muscat. Oh, Muscat. Added to others for sweetness. Cool. Yeah. No, it, it, Muscat, I'm assuming, is the grape they use for Moscato, which is like super sugary yeah. sweet. So it's just interesting because, like, I, and I was talking about this on the stream, and I don't know if, if you've heard of this, but like, I've heard people like different types of peat, right? Like, different levels or different brands of peat. But have you heard of anybody say, like, I like, px sherry and only px sherry. yes so you have okay i personally haven't it's so you mean hurt other people or myself because i i hate not fino. you not you but other people i hate fino and i literally seeked out this bottle because i was curious about it the yeah, mccallan 12 elegancia and and it's it's made from fino and it is disgusting what about the cavalan vino brique that's made from that's red wine that's not do they say what kind of red wine that is i thought i don't know about the vino, vino sherry px and fino this is oloroso and fino so you've got nuttiness plus fino's dry it's not a good combo yeah. this is actually the worst of all the 12s there are five mccallan 12 year olds and this absolutely yeah. is the one i would put See, in the trash can and, first and eric probably... even before the 
the triple cast. Yeah, see, and Steve, Steve noted this. Like, he said that he liked uh, PX and Fina, which is weird because like he likes really sweet or really <laughs> dry. So it's like, bro, where are you at? Where are you yeah, at? he's all over the place. I know. It's good fun then. Just means he doesn't want some compromise in the middle. Yeah, I know. He's like, oh, and but and, but then again, he likes Pete too. So goes well fish. with fish. Mm, maybe oh, you should. need a sample of the Elegancia? All right, just uh, DM me. Remind there you me. Go. But yeah, no, it, it, it's really. Pino is the gooch of shit. <laughs> so besides, God. besides you, have you heard of anyone else that's like, oh, I'm really into just Oloroso, or just into, no, yeah, and that's like saying I'm really into erasers and and nutty nutty notes. Like nobody, I don't know anybody says that. And that that's why it's just it's just interesting because like I know Except some people me. like, oh, I like very very strong Arbeg peat, or I like very very strong Lefrog peat, or I like Berkeley peat. And that kind of stuff. So it's like, correct. It's very it's interesting. easier to classify. Yeah, but like sherry, like, like we said, there's a gambit, right? Very sweet, very dry, right in the middle. Yeah, but none of us are spending all our time drinking all this wine. That's the thing. So a lot of us are really spending our time drinking whiskey, looking for other notes. So you think that PX and all of us would get confused then, just because they're both uh, sherry? They're so different. PX is so sweet compared to all of us. But can I say your new palate? You heard of just sherry. You don't know the difference between PX and Oloroso. Do you think I, I can see? If it, was a, if it was a new palette, I would do exactly what I did. I would go buy five bottles of sherry. They were all yeah. different. I would sit down and I would try them all. Yeah. I would literally. So what I did is I put um, pieces of marker papers on the bottom of all the bottles. Mm-hmm. And then I sat down, poured all the glasses, and then I blind taste tested them. Yeah. And yeah. no, That I, seems like I actually a lot of fun. Yeah, because it's sherry. It's, it's all good either way. You can't really go wrong with yeah. it. The only problem is spending how much money on five bottles of sherry and trying to figure that out. But maybe that should be a, a tasting class for like McCallan or something, you know? Uh, they already do that. They they so they take all of their uh, McCallan takes exactly. all of their brand ambassadors to Areth de la Frontera and Frontera, and they actually do taste all that that sherry there. And yeah, Jen, steal that idea because everybody loves to sit down with a bunch of <laughs> yeah, super sweet wouldn't? wines and just have a good time. I think it'd be awesome. Like I certainly haven't done that. I've only been like see the difference between PX and Oloroso because I have a PX and Oloroso whiskey, but I would yeah. love to dive down that other layer and figure out, hey, what's how much exactly? How much of that are the notes from the whiskey that are changing it, and how much of that is the actual sherry? That's why it's nice yeah. to really sit down with the sherry and just be like, oh, let me try all of these because yeah. absolutely so good. So you probably got some bottles there. I got some bottles over here. Just kind of give um, our audience like kind of the bottles that we have that are Oloroso or PX sherry. So or, yeah, you, you already know. you already started with the first one, so Pandora? Amontillado. Uh, Montale- Montiato yep. with the Tames. That was hard to beat. I'll do another Glenmo. Um, yeah. I also have the Dutac, which is PX and Virgin Oak. So it's got it's got good flavors too. It's not as sweet as the Tames. So actually, it, it tastes so much more like oh. the typical Glenmore and Jamaica. And when you're on that, and since you're on that note, um, I didn't realize that a lot of these um, sherry uh, casts, the new ones anyway, are more American oak now <clears throat> and not European oak as they used to be. So that's another one of my giant problems yeah. with McAllen lately is because I'm pretty sure they're changing their ratios, even on like the 18, which really bothers me to no end. Mm-hmm. You have no idea. Yeah, no, it, it's, like, it's really uh, interesting how much the wood, even though it's the same sherry that's going into it, right? The wood changing it and then the age is differently as well. Correct. Because wood interaction with American white oak, uh, Quercus alba, is completely different than Quercus Robur. And there's a reason why Quercus Robur is so much more breathable and gives so much more color to the whiskey versus American Quercus Alba, which gives like lends no color and doesn't have the same level of interaction. It's so crazy. Yeah, so it's a quick tip for you guys. Um, if you guys do see a, um, a bottle that has an American sherry or American oak sherry or um, European wood used for the sherry, try and always go for the European. It's a lot more richer, I would say. So, okay, here's I'm going to cut you off right there. Yeah, go for it. So, sometimes, maybe, it depends on your palate. Like, okay. Steve, over there in chat, Yeah. over there in chat, like, Steve literally likes those flavors, like the American oak flavors. Gotcha. Oh, recent Mac 18s are like water. It's super weird. But he likes, like, we compared the classic cut. Yeah. And I don't dig it because it's very ginger forward, and it reminds me of very much of, like, American wood oak. Gotcha. And he, he thinks it's great, and I disagree. But that's how whiskey works. Yeah, so... <laughs> Um, it's not just the sherry guys. It's also the wood that was used. So there is two differences between the two. So when someone says it's sherry, you have to ask a kind of dive into that part too. So, I mean, that's what McAllen does now with, um, that's their thing for the, the new, for the double wood and the yeah. triple cask, right? The double cask is just making sure that you use both European, which is what they normally use and yeah. American oak for sherry. 
And then the triple cask is both the cherry ones and then the one X bourbon. And it's, I, th- so I think it's the the Macallan 18s with the smaller shoulders, so not the broader but new bottles. Are, I think are more Correct. European, right? The older the, ones are the, more European. The cylindrical Absolutely. ones. I don't have one here. Sorry, but. but yeah. I don't even like the new newer broad shoulder ones. Actually, I found a Mac 25 that was an older one, and I literally paid like 140 bucks. I mean, my friends could have some. It was so good. Yeah. Like the older ones are so good. I had the new one already, the 2018. So uh, for me, what's up next is my only PX bottle that I have here. And Are you serious? It's the only PX I've been searching, so I might have to dive in again. But um, it's the forecast. Live? And to be honest, well, most of the time that I've been drinking my PX, or I go to bars and drink my PX. But um, yeah, so Lafroig PX cast. Um, this is probably my favorite Lafroig. I'm not a big peat head, but the PX sherry in general does kill the peat. Or at least lowers it down and makes it more it of a second, it. makes it more of a secondary character instead of the front and forward. Right. So sherry and age, those are the two things. So there you go. So oh. if you're like, oh, Charles likes the frog. Yeah, Pete's great, but um, I like it massaged with some PX. So you already showed me one that you have. So this is Oloroso and PX. Yes. Andronic cast string. Yes. But even the regular twelve, it's in the same boat. It's yeah. PX I, and Oloroso. When I picked up good. Yeah. When I picked up the cast up. strength, I looked at it and I was like, this can't be true. And then I checked the twelve, and it is both both in the same. So. Yeah. Now, we already covered the Fina, right? The Elegancia? Yes, yes we did. This is the gross. Don't need to cover that. And, <laughs> That's it. And then one thing I noticed a lot with my <laughs> collection, it's definitely Oloroso heavy, but it's a lot Oloroso with cast strength tied to it. So the Abelaura Bonaga, this is batch 52, so this is an older batch, Bono, Oloroso sherry butts, so these are the larger casts, right? The sherry butts, the bigger ones. Yep. So, um, yeah. Um, as you can see, the darkness there. I didn't realize that um, PX is actually lighter than Oloroso, is what they said. But I mean, European oak. Yeah. Does it really matter? It's gonna give that color. And then on the note of cast strength, I also have the Nadura collection from Glenlivet, the Oloroso cast. <laughs> the only Glenlivets that I'll drink. They're the only ones that carry good flavor. I know it's it, it's just the cast strength series. I love it. Um, it's great. And I didn't realize like the the start of my journey for whiskey was definitely more on the sweeter side. I'm surprised I didn't dive more deeper into the PX line and more into the Oloroso middle lane line. So I think maybe this year I'm going to f- focus more on trying to get more PX casts. I think my problem is uh, – oh, he's singing. I think my problem is when I first started uh, trying weird finishes, yep. I started with Oloroso, and there was a local okay. – uh, we'll say a local – not distill, a local bottler who was bottling stuff that was finished in some funky sherry casts. Mm-hmm. And they just so good Oloroso has nuttiness to it and this like round note to it that's really good. Bad Oloroso has a little bit of sulfur and tastes like rubber, like rubber erasers. Mm. It's like it's just not good. And that is a blend. You can tell the darker slats are European oak and the lighter slats are uh, American oak I, up here. I thought the darker one was like the, <laughs> you know, Jack Daniels barrels, man. It's all charred. Yeah. It's all second time charred, yeah. third time charred, whatever. I'll get a char. I'll use a barrel forever. <laughs> Flapping in the wind. But yeah, no, it just it depends on what kind of Oloroso you come across. It depends on what kind of share you come across. All of it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. But at some point, you're going to take that dive and you're going to be like, wait, these are the things that they're being finished in. Like, I need to know. Like, if you really want to spend some money and you want to have an incredible time with a dessert wine. So Glenmorangie, everybody knows the Nectar to Ore, which yep. is fantastic because it's finished in, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh my gosh, why is my brain? Sauternes cast. Yeah. Um, but if you want to go absolutely nuts with it, the Sauternes cast that they have, because LVMH owns it, it's actually from Chateau de Chem. So if okay. you guys want to spend 400 bucks on a killer bottle of 2007 <laughs> Chateau de Chem uh, sure. Sauternes Why for not? a 375 milliliter, yeah. <laughs> goodness, get into it. It's so sick. You get, how did we forget Madeira? Oh, my gosh. Madeira. Yeah, Madeira cast finish. It's another wine finish that's like yeah. absolutely uh, – yeah, so all these wine finishes, you should actually go out and try those wines. Yeah. So that you can be like, oh, I get it. This is what this tastes like, and this is what this and, tastes like. That way you can at least be knowledgeable about the the And that's, the and that's probably the thing, right? Like, that's probably why I like port casts the most, because I used to drink port a lot. Yeah. So I, I fell I mean, in love with that. Australia. I fell in love with that flavor. Right now, my wine preference is more Malbec's from Argentina. I haven't seen that many, um, whatchamacallit, Masala, what, Masala cast? Is there I'm assuming they mean Marcella wine. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna go into like the weirdo type 
wines. Chateau de Kim is the bomb. You just can't always afford Chateau de Kim. That's the problem. <laughs> Chateau de Kim is always yeah. rated like 99, 100. Sure, I got a 2001. Yeah, Eric, wait, great job, man. Just chilling, you know, just sitting there, you know, opening it up to share with us. The first time I had a Chateau de Kim was like a couple years ago for Thanksgiving. And some girl, I didn't know her. Some girl just brought it. And so we all cracked the bottle together. <laughs> some girl's like, hey, and she didn't. She didn't tell us later that she spent almost $700 on the bottles, like a 97 Chateau de Kim uh, Sauternes. And then we were all just like, um, I don't think this is like, what we had planned on doing. Uh, how this close of a friend wild. are you? <laughs> it was crazy. It was a crazy time. Good for her. So. She's like, 700 bucks. Sure. Tell me this tastes like shit and I'll be, tell you how much the price is. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's funny, but good friend to have, man. Shit. Uh, yeah, let us know if you guys have a preference in uh, type of wine finish or just sherry cast finish. That'd be great to know. Um, I haven't seen that many people go into the Fino category. I know Steve did mention that he likes it, but it's just very interesting to see if people really like that dryness. Two o'clock in the morning. Jason, why are you Jason up? Jason Whiskey or Wise, thank you so much for joining, man. It's, it's cause Fino has it like dry notes and it's almost tannic. Ooh. It's not it's not something enjoyable. Since we have Jason here, Jason, we are trying to plan a trip to yeah. Scotland, bro. So we are gonna try and hit you up and see if we can meet up. Just let you know. But it's in Scotland, so I know that's a bit of a flight train drive. So flight train drive? You have to do it all at one time. There's like a plane on the, attached to the front of the train that you also steer. Sure. Yeah. Weird. That's what they do over in England. It is it? <laughs> um wine from nineteen seventy, was it good? That's the good question. Is it good? Really good. Aw, oh, so sweet. So sweet, Jason. Thank you. Sudera? Chateau Sudera? I've never had the Sauternes. Yeah. I've had Sauternes from a couple different places, but never there. Yeah, I really... So Dequem was the one that spoiled I'm trying to think of really the other one. Chateau Rouge. Eric they have to wait and see if he schools us in some wines, because that'd be pretty cool to, you know, pick his brain with I them. mean, I just suck with wines, period. Because, yeah. like, they just don't have enough ABV to really get the flavors. And I don't know how long you have to sit with them to aerate them to actually get the flavors out of them, but... It's too long. Too long to wait. Yeah, true. True. <laughs> Jason, you are hardcore. Yeah, dude. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, but yeah, anything else, man, you want to share? Like, I started diving through that rabbit hole, and I just, it just blew my mind that the fact that I always thought these sherry casts were used for sherry production to drink, not knowing that they were seasoned and so on. Some have got to be, I'm sure, but yeah. I, I really don't mind that some of them are being used so that they can house the most delicious nectar on the planet. You really like really that bottle, that friends and family one, don't you? And no one will come off of a second one. Do you have any idea? And people are like, I'm just going to sit on mine and wait until it's worth more money. Yeah. At some point, somebody's going to be like 400 bucks, and I'm going to be like, look, okay. <laughs> I'll give it to you. <laughs> I hate that. It's going to be double the price, and I'm going to cry about it when it happens. Uh, It'll be worth it, though. That it's, It was so good. Yeah, man. Like it, And that's always a hard part, right? Like trying to find that one bottle that you really enjoy. <clears throat> so if you guys do have a bottle that you like a lot, Always buy a second, man. Don't regret it. Sherry's great. You know what else is great for quieting screaming children? Pillows. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> and I heard someone laugh too, so it's like they heard it. It's uh, me. Oh, did, whoa, that's not good. Someone, someone's laughing over there. Someone thinks it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, that's not my wife. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's basically our thing. Um, if you guys have any questions, suggestions, or any other topics, such- we also oh, uh, we launched our Discord last week. Um, we got like we? yeah, we're like eight people in it. So if you guys are are wanting to jump in, you posted the picture. I think uh, Whiskey Edge posted picture. I posted my pictures. So yeah, let us know. Just great fun conversations having around there. Maybe even continue conversations after the whiskey and tie or anything like that. So uh, yeah, Jam dude. So funny thing, your dad bought the whiskey in 1970. Most whiskeys aren't actually meant to be drinking beyond the one year mark after they're made. And the ones that are meant to be drinking way later usually have dates on, like, if you buy a case of it, it'll have a date that you're supposed to keep it in the cellar until when it's supposed to be, like, the most ripe or whatever, yeah. when it's supposed to be aged to the perfect time. And now you're making me wonder, Latour, oh, my gosh, you want to spend some money? Yeah. You want to talk about spending, like, thousands of dollars on a stinking, stinking bottle? Yeah, I saw Yeah, no, it's, it's a wine. No, whiskey would last would have lasted that, that amount of time. I wouldn't even doubt yeah. it. Whiskey lasts forever. But wine, wine, on the other hand, completely different. And next week, Steve, you're right. Maybe I'll read from Wikipedia. Who knows? I did not read from Wikipedia. I might man. do it just to make you angry. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't read from Wikipedia. I'm reading from, I'm like trying to recall what I learned. Sorry. So many apps, so little time. So many whiskeys, so little time. Uh, Pitcher, my so friend. So many whiskeys, so little liver. Pitcher, 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 pitcher. 
Are we Man, supposed I to need to cut my hair too, dude? Holy crap! Be a man, you must be swift as the coursing river. This isn't even Sherry related. That's the worst what? part. I'm not even doing what we're supposed to be doing. I'm so <laughs> what? Actually, put this up here. Put the Montiato. Wink, wink. Okay. I think we got it. I think we got it. I think we got it. Glendronic, uh, mine's cast two. Uh, Wally's is cast four. Level set? I don't know. Your last bottle, Wally. What was the cast? Which bottle? This one right here? That one? Name the bottle. Bricoletti? It's... Is this one she's talking about? Jan, are you talking about this one? Yeah, it's... This is, a. Uh, it's Brooklady. It was a cast that a bunch of people, friends of, uh... Friends of Brooklady. Friends of Brooklady got together and literally bought a barrel. So, so a bunch of us online got together and then everybody chipped in. It was 180 bucks a bottle and we ended up buying all, uh... How many bottles was it? 2,000 something, right? So doesn't, I want to say it was like three or 400 bottles. So oh really? Bought all of them. Hundred. I thought I was it was, it was, it was like, in a thousand. Nah, it was like three, three hundred or four hundred bottles, something like that. But it's a fifteen-year uh, sherry cask only, single cask Brooklady, and it's absolutely, absolutely incredible. It's it's incredible on another level, on a level I mean that I've never had from Brooklady. And so, no yeah. one will sell him a second bottle. And no one will sell a second bottle, which is crazy. Even for double the price. There's one guy on the forums who's literally mixing it with Uigadale because he likes the extra peat. And we're like, what are you doing, bro? And I'm like, <laughs> just sell me your other bottle because you're obviously going to abuse it in ways that are not appropriate. Or for ask him, hey, I'll buy half your bottle. Yeah. Pour it. Just get half the bottle. I Yeah, I'd be happy with half a bottle. I would. Hmm. Fair enough. All right, guys. Well, that's our show. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, we're live every Tuesday, uh, 530 uh, Pacific. 8.30 Eastern. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nicholas Polasek, you saw some left online Facebook for you. Oh, yeah, no, there were a couple that were UK market only. You had to have an SWA account, and they were like leftovers from the barrel. Yeah, they were uh, saving just in case something happened during shipping, but not, everything worked out. Dang it. I was going to say, like, just get someone from the UK to buy it for you. And we'll no, go visit. that's the problem. I need somebody with an SWA account. Oh. I... Hmm. Hmm. The same, man. Hmm. We're going to find a way. If there's a will, there's a way. All right. What if there's a Wally? If there's a Wally, is there a way? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see you next episode. How about that? And on that note, what do we say, my friend? Deuces. Peace.